hello and welcome to this new Blender Grease Pencil Rigging video. Today we look at rigging a 2D puppet character like this one, with the help of Wiggle 2, a free Blender add-on that adds physics to bones. We will not make the rig from scratch, but look at how the Grease Pencil object is structured and how each of the armature bones move parts of the body. If you are new to rigging with Grease Pencil, I have a complete free course on this channel that will walk you step by step through 2D drawing, rigging and animation. This video was inspired by 3D puppet making tutorial by Punisher and this is the 2D grease pencil version of it. If you want to study the final rig and support this channel, get it for $5 from Gumroad. As usual, all the links mentioned in this video are in the description. So we'll start with the structure of our grease pencil object. Let's disable overlays. Let's go here to grease pencil and here are our layers. So we'll start with the sketch layer here. It is a hidden layer. And let's hit this button to isolate this layer. It is an ugly sketch, it's what I started with, and I could have just deleted this layer, but I kept it, just hit it. Then we have the arms, and since they don't overlap, I just kept them in the same layer. It's easy to assign vertex groups by selecting one of the arms. All this is explained in our piggy course, of course. Then we have the body. The body, just like the arms, is controlled by just one bone, so it can be in one layer. Then we have the ears and they are in their own layer because they will be animated to create an illusion of 3D. So for example, when the face goes left, the left of the character, the ears will go right. So then we have the head and it's the first layer that has an interpolation. We can see it, we need to go under the modifiers panel here and disable the time offset modifier. So now we can see that it's just the shin that goes bigger. Very simple interpolation. Then we have the face. So the face includes these guys here that will go up when the mouth opens and go left and right also then we have the mouth it has also an interpolation it has just one line here and then it has this shape in the second frame and then the same shape made bigger here and we created i created an interpolation in between i'll tell you how i did it in a moment then we have the beard you need to make space for the mouth when it goes bigger and that's why we need an interpolation for the beard and lastly we have the hair layer. You see that unlike the other layers that have interpolations of 24 frames, here we have 48 frames and that is because it's like two interpolations in one. So we have the rest position here and then we have an interpolation for the hair going right, the right of the character. And from here on we have the opposite, the hair going to the left. When you use interpolation with the time offset and with armatures, it's better to have more frames so that even when you move your bones slowly you have a smooth animation. So let's unhide all the layers except the sketch layer of course. One difference also with the piggy character is the materials. So in our piggy we used only a stroke material and a fill material but here most of the shapes use this stroke and fill material. So if I hide the stroke you see that it's used only by the nose and the mouth here and the fill is used by the cheeks, the irises and the hair and all the rest is using this material. So I first drew all the the character using the stroke material and then I assign the stroke and fill material to the shapes that I wanted. So if we go to edit mode, let's enable overlays and you select one point from here for example, you go to stroke, you hit assign, you can assign a new material to a stroke and you can do the opposite too. For the colors, if you draw directly with your stroke and fill material, let's go to draw mode, you can enable color attributes here and here there is a setting to choose the mode. If you choose only um, fill, here the stroke will keep its color and the fill color will be changed. So here we have this and if you already draw this shape here and want to change color, you can go to vertex paint mode and enable selection here, either this one or this one and then alt select here, choose a color of course here, maybe this orange color and then you go to paint and set color attribute. You see here that it changes everything but we have our last operation menu here and we change also to just fill. So that's how I colored all these shapes here. Now now I want to show you how I created the interpolation for the mouth. So let's go to a new file here. Let's choose our arc here and let's just draw a line. Nice. Now E to extrude. Now we do, I think, middle mouse button. Then we go to edit mode and we select everything and we do F to fill the shape here. Then we can select. So it should be in the lines layer. We can select it and move it or duplicate it. Shift T and we can go here to this new frame and go to sculpt mode and start sculpting. So F make the brush bigger and start here and you see it's not easy, especially near the corner. 
to take the sky and make the mouth bigger and then we will need to smooth this is the method that we used in our piggy course but we didn't have a case of a corner like this so here instead of sculpting it's better to go to edit mode and use curve editing instead so let's delete these frames again and before you enable curve editing open this guy here and you better have adaptive resolution disabled and here i usually have only 16. the most important thing is to have adaptive resolution disabled so we enable curve editing and we have these handles here we have this point at the corner and this is good you see i can select an individual point because i have stroke select mode so we select point select mode and now i can select this point here so it has two handles but they are like three handles and we can have a corner here but here we have aligned handles as you can see so here it's hard to have a corner so what we can do is first delete the sky we don't need it i mean the solve it so we do x and then the solve or just d on the keyboard and now we can do v and change from aligned to vector so we hit vector so now you see that it is very easy to change the shape and make it bigger and keep our corners i will also create a point like this one on top so i select this guy then shift select this point right click and do subdivide and now we have a point on top a point in the bottom and these guys here let's try to make the shape look better make sure that these ones are in the center and that their handles have similar lengths and then in the corners also try to have some symmetry between this one and this one it doesn't have to be perfect of course then we go to frame 24 let's zoom in here shift t and now we have a new frame with the same handles in the same place and we can make the mouth bigger so you see in some cases curve editing in edit mode is cleaner and easier and faster than doing sculpting this is it you can make it bigger than this and now we can disable curve editing and we have these points here so a to select everything and since adaptive resolution is disabled we keep the same points and we don't have new points when we move our handles so here we just do Control shift e interpolates and we have this beautiful interpolation now about these highlights here it's just the rim effect here and the uh, visual effects so we have some offset and we have some blur here and it is of course only visible on render view here and now let's check our vertex groups and our bones so the vertex groups are here let's disable lock object modes let's select our armature go to pose mode by doing control tab let's enable overlays let's select our puppets here and we do control tab we change to weight paint and now we can see both our armature in pose mode and our vertex groups start with the first bone by doing control left click blender will select also the vertex group connected to it and you see that the whole body is controlled by just this bone the names of course of the bone and the vertex groups are the same and they are created automatically when we parent our grease pencil object to our armature everything is explained in detail and step by step in our piggy course let's just select our armature and go here under armature properties and enable names now we do control left click oh, first we select the puppets then control left click on the left arm and also one bone controls the whole arm the same in the right arm and now to the head bone control left click the head bone has weight painting for this head egg only and the rest of the head features are connected to bones that are parented to this bone now to the mouth bone this one is just a control bone to open and close the mouth and then we have the left to right bone and it is connected to the face features except the mouth and the beard that are connected to this bone mouth left to right then we have the ears bone that is linked to both ears of course and we have the irises bone and then we have the hair bone and this one has weight painting for the hair and lastly we have the hair wiggle bone that will control the time offset modifier for animating the hair and that is all the bone structure and all the vertex groups we have and there is one difference in blender 4 from blender 3.6 is that the bone layers were removed so previously we used to select a bone and do m to move to a layer but now it moves to a collection and we can see our collections here so these collections replaced both the 
the bone layers and the bone groups. And I organized my bones in two collections. One is manual, that are the bones that we will be able to animate manually. And the other one is auto. And the auto bones are the bones that will move automatically and we won't touch at all. These move either using drivers or using the wiggle add-on that we will see later. So let's unhide both collections. Let's go back to our puppet and check our time offset modifiers. So we have just to one for the hair. It uses fixed frame and there is a driver on the frame value. The influence is just the hair layer, of course. Let's switch here to grease pencil. Then we have the mouth time offset and this one controls all the other layers. So the beard, the mouth and the head, that means the shin going up and down. They are all controlled by this modifier and under influence we have a pass index of one. So all three layers here have a pass index of one. If you go here and the relations, you see that we have a pass index of one and all the other layers have a pass index, the default pass index is zero. And now we can check our drivers. So let's go back to object mode. Let's open the driver drivers panel from here. Let's disable selected only so that we can see all the drivers and let's go to the drivers tab here. We start with the time offset drivers. So first the hair is controlled by the hair wiggle bone as you can see here and it uses the Z rotation in local space. So you see the Z is, is this one going from back to front. And the expression is this one minus var multiplied by 50. So this is something that you get from experimenting. Plus 24. And that means that in rest position, the hair will be on frame 24. And then when this bone rotates left or right, the hair will go either left or right. Then I added here a bone constraint to limit the local Z rotation, the minimum and maximum, so that the bone can't rotate beyond a certain angle here. This also you need to experiment with and see at which angle Angle, the animation is at its limits in the last frame and it's especially important in frame one because we don't want the hair to go to frame zero and disappear and it is good to enable effect transform in our bone constraints next we have the mouth frame offset it is controlled of course by this bone here we have minus var multiplied by 700 plus one and that means that at rest position we will be at frame one the type is x location in local space and this is the local x location of our mouth Mouth, and when it goes up it will trigger time offset for all three layers the beard the mouth and the shin and there is also a limit location here you can't go beyond this point 0.033 meters and it can't go beyond the maximum of zero here this one is most important because if we disable it we will get this flickering if we get down here so enable it again and you see that moving the bone up won't just trigger the time offset modifier but it also makes the ears go down the nose and eyes go up and also the hair go up so all those animations are also controlled by drivers linked to this bone so let's start with y location in the left right bone this bone has two types of animation one is manual that is the local x location so if we do g we can move the head left and right but we can't move it up and down because the y location is controlled by this bone the mouth bone and the type is the same x location the local x location of this bone and here we have minus var divided by eight so if we have only minus var here and we get this bone up the nose and eyes move too fast this is also you need to experiment and see what works best for you so the driver here here is in the y axis if we do n here's our driver here adding drivers is also explained in detail in our picky course we have a driver for the hair bone so this one and it's also controlled by the mouth bone in x location local space and this time it's minus var divided by 12 then we have the ears so this is our ears bone this time this driver is controlled by this one the left right bone the type is x location as you can see here the local x location when this bone moves the ears go in the opposite direction as you can see and then we have another driver for our ears bone so one on the x and one on the y the second driver is this one on its local y axis and again it's controlled by our mouth bone and that's how this bone will control the ears bone we control the left right bone we control the hair bone and we also control the time offset modifier to have this animation
And then lastly, we have this bone. As we saw, it is linked to the beard and mouth vertex group, and it is responsible for making them go right and left. For this one, we didn't add a driver. We just added a copy location constraint to copy the location of this guy just on the local X axis. When this bone moves on the X axis, this bone will copy its location and do the same. And you see that it only copies the X location and not the Y location. When this bone goes up, this bone will not go up. And that's why we separated the animation of the eyes and nose from the animation of the mouth and beard because we don't want here the mouth to go up when the nose and eyes go up. That's why we had to separate and have a bone that can get the mouth and beard to go left and right, but not get them up and down. So I guess this is all about our drivers and now to the wiggle add-on. Let's join these areas. I have a link in the description to the add-on and in the add-ons page, there are instructions, detailed instructions on how to install it and how to use it. Let's type in here wiggle and you see that we have our wiggle to add-on enabled here. And when we are in pause mode, you can do N get to this animation tab here and you see the settings for our add-on. So the wiggle and we added it to the hair wiggle bone. You see here that we have bone head and bone tail. So the head of the bone is its base and the tail is this one. Adding or enabling the wiggle on the tail will make the bone rotate automatically when parent bones move in a certain way. So here we have all these settings, stiffness, we have gravity. You see that I disabled it. By default, it's one and I put in zero. And the stiffness, the more or the bigger value here, the less movement the bone will have and the more stiff it will be. So here after experimenting with some animations, I put it at 80. Maybe we can go to the action editor here and enable one of our animations, this one, Puppet anim test, play the animation, and you see how the bone will react to the body bone rotating left and right. So you see it's very easy and now the animation of this bone is automated and we don't have to do anything else. Next we have the wiggling of the irises. So here I enabled it both for the head and for the tail of this bone. Since it is in the center between these two eyes so when it rotates one will go up and one will go down and it will give us that nice puppety animation. Let's try it with the other action puppet comb. So in this one we don't just have rotation but we have the this bone that goes up and down. So you see now that the eyes also don't just rotate but they go up and down. And you have also to play with the settings. So here we have more stiff bones so that we don't have a very strong rotation and movement that gets the iris out of the eyes. We have wiggling enabled for the arms too. So here only for the bone tail because we don't want the arms to move. We just want them to rotate a little bit. Here also we have gravity as zero. If you put it at one. You see how the arm is pulled by gravity. You can also have a value like 0.2 maybe and have a slight gravity pull back to zero. Of course, the same settings are in the other arm. And how about the body? I want to have also some wiggling of the body. So let's enable, I think, bone tail. And I want to have stretch at one. So stretching will make the bone stretch and go taller and shorter. And it should be more visible in this bouncing animation. So let's try it. And you see that, yes, it is stretching up and down. But because of gravity, at the end of animation, our character is shorter. So change this back to zero and test again. And we have this beautiful springing animation. And since all the other bones are parented to this bone, the stretching will affect all the other bones. It's also an automatic and beautiful animation with very small effort from us. Just moving this bone up and down will trigger all those animations, the irises animation, the hair animation, the arms that go up and down and wiggle and jiggle. This add-on is really simple to use and very powerful and I think it should be part of Blender. And then here we have these global wiggle utilities and we have this option here to loop physics. This option here is useful for looping animations. If you go here to Puppet Anim Test, we have a looping animation that goes left and right and then does the same again. With the loop physics disabled, the physics reset and start all over again and we can see when there is a cut. When we enable loop physics, now we can tell when the animation starts and ends. If your animation is not a looping animation like our puppet com animation, the loop physics will have a very different effect. So here we have this. It's actually not bad. It's like it's screaming and going back. Something is putting it back. 
It's a very cartoonish effect actually. Let's go back to our puppet base action. Now the last thing I want to talk about is the bone locking. Let's select this guy, let's hit N and go again to item. Just like we did in the piggy course, we lock all the channels that we don't need. You make sure that here under animation, we have only insert available. Also, it is better to have XYZ order for all the bones. And you see here which channels I locked. For the ones that have drivers like this one, we can lock the channel that has the driver and it won't affect the driver and also these wiggling bones as you can see for this one for example everything is locked but still the wiggle add-on will be able to rotate on the local z-axis here and uh, yeah let's check them all one by one so that you see which channels are locked and all the bones that we want manually keyframe we add it to our auto collection so that we can hide them since we don't use them manually and we keep only the bones that we will actually animate and one thing i almost forget is the lip syncing either for this guy or these 3d guys you don't need an expensive vr headset you just need the trick that we learned in the last part of our piggy course you just sync the movement of this single bone to audio it's all that we need in puppets because we just have this vertical movement and we don't have any lip shapes to deal with this is it if you have any questions or suggestions for future videos just leave a comment get the final rig from gumroad to support this channel leave a like subscribe see you in another video and peace